Let's do a quick review of graphing the logarithmic functions. Basically, the everything you need to know to graph a logarithm before you have to take that test or quiz or even complete your homework. Okay, so this is a logarithmic equation. And I would probably say the first thing that, or maybe not the first thing, the most common thing that students have trouble with graphing logarithms is still forgetting what actually even a logarithm means or it represents and how do I kind of make a shape of a graph of that? And that's critically important because if you don't understand what this means, it's very difficult to go ahead and create a table of values for that. So this is what we call the logarithmic form. And what I want to do is always remember, you can always go ahead and think about logarithms in terms of their exponential form. So to rewrite something in logarithmic, to logarithmic form to exponential form, you're going to keep the base the same, and then you're going to take your base raised to what it's equal to, so 2 to the y is equal to an x. So when we are looking for the log base 2 of x, we're basically going to ask ourselves, is 2 raised to this power y is going to be, is going to equal to an x. So the reason why this is important is if I want to graph or I want to remember, you know, what crap, what does a logarithm graph look like? Where's the y-intercept? Where's the asymptote? I need a quick little understanding. I always like to start with this graph first. And then again, even if you need a little bit more help, create a table of values. Now, the table of values that we're going to go ahead and work on for this one is going to be really important that we want to make sure we're picking correct values. I want to pick values that 2 raised to a certain number is going to give me these values of x. So here's the values that I'm going to choose. Okay, so let's go and start with the first one. So again, if I wanted to understand which it is going to be 1, so if I read to write this as y equals log base 2 of 1, again, think about this in exponential form, all this is really saying is 2 raised to what value is going to equal a one. Well, hopefully you remember from what we talked about with exponential functions, anything raised to zero is going to give us the value of one. What about if y equals a log base two of two, right? If x is equal to two. Again, two raised to what value is going to give you two? Hopefully you recognize here that is going to be one. Now, hopefully you recognize again, well, no matter what value I plug in for here, I'm basically asking myself two raised to what number y is going to equal that value or that argument inside your logarithm. So two raised to what number is going to give me four? That's two. Two raised to what number is going to give me eight? That's three. And then this one is a lot of times one that gets a little tricky with students. So if I have y equals log base two of one half. Well, if we rewrite it in our form, two raised to what value y is going to equal a one half. Now here, utilize some kind of thinking as far as, well, what is this going to equal to? Now we're going to go over and cover the properties of exponential and logarithms here in a later video. But what I want you to kind of see here is, and just to remember that I can always rewrite a two to the right, I can rewrite a one half as two to the negative first power. And if I have two raised to some number equals two raised to the negative second power, hopefully you guys can agree with me that y has to equal a negative one. So in this value, y is equal to negative one. So now let's go and graph these values here on a graph. So I have one comma zero, I have two comma one, I have four comma two, and I have eight comma three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I have at one half, I have a negative one. So now you can see that this graph is looking something like this. Now, this is very, very important because again, as we talked about with the exponential functions, as I keep on doing closer and closer fractions that are getting closer and closer to zero, I'm gonna start getting bigger and bigger numbers. So again, just like we had with the exponential function, this graph is approaching a vertical asymptote. Now there's also something that's really, really important about this that I want you to see. This graph looks very similar to the exponential graph. It's not exactly alike, but it's very, very similar. And there's a special relationship between the exponential graph and the logarithmic graph. And that is that they are what we call inverses of each other. They are reflective about this y equals x line. So it's really important to understand that relationship for a couple of reasons. One, we know that inverse functions or functions that are inverses of each other have their domain and the range swapped. And we can visually see this exactly right here. The domain of this graph here is going to be from zero to infinity. Remember, the graph is never going to touch zero. It's only going to continue approaching zero as it keeps on going further to the left. It keeps on going farther, farther down, but it's getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So the domain is from zero to infinity. The range, though, is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. And that's the exact reverse of what we looked at for the domain and range of the exponential function. Now, to generalize this logarithmic function, again, we can use b as our base. 
okay? And the important thing I want you to understand is it doesn't really matter, ladies and gentlemen, what the base is. It could be base 10, it could be base E. All the graphs are gonna have this exact same shape. And again, just like we learned with exponential functions, they're always gonna have a x-intercept of one comma zero. So it's always gonna take this general shape, no matter what the base is. So we could have a base of 10, we could have a base of E, like the ln of x. It doesn't really matter. It, they're all gonna take the shape of this graph. Now, however, there are some transformations though that we can apply with logarithmic functions. So when we are looking at logarithmic functions, some of those operations or transformations would be a log base b of x minus c plus d. And again, remember when I talked about the x minus c was inside of the exponent or inside of the power of the exponential function? That's why I was shifting it left and right. Look at where the x minus c is on the logarithm. It's inside the argument of the logarithm. That's how we know that that is going to be your shifting left or right. The plus d, again, is not part of the logarithm. It's just plus d at the end. So that is gonna be your vertical shift up and down. And then again, your a is gonna be your vertical stretch, your compression. However, your a is gonna more act like the quadratic if your vertical stretch and compression is not going to change this x-intercept. Remember for exponential functions, it changed the y-intercept. If there was no other horizontal or vertical shifts, whatever your a was, that was your new y-intercept. That is not the case with logarithms. That is going to be a pure vertical stretch or compression, as well as a reflection about the x-axis. Now remember, just like what we did in the for exponential equations, if I have a y equals a log base b of a negative x, remember that is going to be reflection of your y-axis. And that is very important because if you take this graph and reflect it about the y-axis, you now are going to impact your domain. Now the domain of this case would be from negative infinity to zero. Your range would still remain the same, but now you'd have a new y-intercept of negative one comma zero. So always look for in your logarithm, if you do see you have a negative x, that is going to be a reflection about your y-axis. That is going to impact your y-intercept as well as going to um, impact your domain of the function. But all in all, I think it's just really, really important to make sure you understand the general shape of this graph, the general domain and range, as well as the transformations. And if you ever get stuck, always revert back to this very simple logarithmic problem, revert back to exponential form, can create a table just to remind yourself of what this graph is gonna look like, and then you can go ahead and proceed on them. So hopefully this was a good review for you on graphing logarithmic equations. I think now it's a good time to go into a quick review of the properties of logarithms.